Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Behind me, I got a 2010 Toyota RAV4, and we are going to be replacing a lower ball joint today. Now, before we go ahead and begin this video, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button down below and definitely smash that like button because it helps the channel out. And with that said, let's go ahead and get started on today's video. Now, before you begin, obviously you want to get the car lifted in the air by whatever means you choose to do so. Uh, in this scenario, we have it on the lift and our front tire where we are going to be replacing the ball joints already taken off. We're doing the right front, but it's the same process for the left front. Uh, these cars have individualized ball joints where you can replace just the ball joint. It's actually bolted onto the control arm and uh, you guys will see in the video. But it's a very good design. I like it. It's very practical for replacing ball joints. And uh, you know, like I said, they're uh, quick and easy to get to. So let's go ahead and uh, get started on this. So I have you guys set up on the lower ball joint. Now this ball joint itself doesn't really have any looseness to it. It's the fact that it can't keep grease in it. All the grease has come out of it. So we're going to be preventative and replace it before it gets worse per customer request. Uh, backstory is this car was at the dealer. They recommended a bunch of work. And uh, let's just say it was too expensive at the dealer. So the guy brought it into me. Now first thing where I like to begin is you guys will see there is a little cotter pin clip that holds into place. What I like to do is grab some uh, pliers or you know whatever you have and go ahead and take this off. Now we are not going to be reusing this, uh, but the way these work is they have like a little lock tab so you guys can see you pull this side out, uh, pull it out and then pull it straight out. Very good design, however we have heavy duty cotter pins that come with our new ball joints. So we're not going to be replacing uh, this old pin in there so it's time to retire it. Now these ball joints are actually really simple. Uh, there's three bolts here that hold it into the control arm and then we have the one holding it to our arm. Uh, after I remove the cotter pin, where I like to begin is we're gonna go ahead and crack this bolt up here loose. It should be a 21 millimeter if memory serves me correctly. Let me go ahead and get some tools and I'll show you guys how we do that. All right, so I misspoke in the last clip. It's actually a 19 millimeter they're gonna be using. Now, the one that I like to use is this really long XL wrench. It has a uh, closed off end on both sides. One side is ratcheting, as you guys can see, and one side is uh, non-ratcheting. What I like to do is go ahead and put it on here. Make sure you got it on very good. And uh, sometimes these can be a pain. Uh, so if you guys need a breaker bar or something on this or a pipe, uh, it's totally understandable. Now let me see if this one comes off here. Uh, I've done the driver's side and to be honest with you, the driver's side didn't fight me too much, but let's see. Uh, okay, so it is a little tight, but it looks like it is loosening up here. Now, once I get it to break free, I like to put the ratchet end on it and see. Uh, and I apologize if I'm blocking the camera, but uh, this part of it is very critical. So, all right, we got it uh, broken loose. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and just spin this off. Uh, be careful when you're using a ratchet style because sometimes the ratchet head could get stuck on there. Um, it's not a big deal if that were to happen, uh, but you know, it, uh, it can be annoying. So I get to a certain point and then what I like to do is just try to take it off by hand. Typically once they're broken loose and you get the bolt about halfway off, you can just spin them off as uh, you guys can see here. And uh, I'll just give you guys a quick uh, brief thing here. It's very hot in the shop today. Doors are closed. It's currently like 85 degrees outside. I am sweating. So uh, I close the doors so that way there's no ambient noise for the video. Uh, so if you see me sweating in this video, guys, uh, don't be surprised. Uh, but either way, now that we got that nut off, I went ahead and I readjusted the camera there. What I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and tap our ball joint on the knuckle here and get our uh, ball joint separated from our knuckle. And uh, once we do that, I'll bring you guys back in. Uh, it's gonna be quick and simple, guys. If you guys have a separator, you can use a separator, however good old hammer method works. And what I like to do is just, you know, hit it right there basically, break it loose. Now that we have our ball joint freed up, you guys can see it's nice and loose. We have to loosen up our ball joint bolts that hold it up onto the control arm. Now I'm gonna try to get some good lighting in here and I do have to move the camera. So hopefully uh, this isn't too shaky, but you guys will be able to see that there are three bolts that hold our ball joint into place. You have two nuts and then one bolt. I always like to start off by removing the bolt. It's a 17 millimeter. If no one has been in here before to replace it, 
Now, depending on the kit that you buy for the ball joint, it may have different sizes. Sometimes they come with new hardware, sometimes they don't. The kit that I use is a Moog. It actually requires you to reuse the hardware, which is fine. They give you Loctite and everything. These aren't locking washers or bolts or anything. Uh, they're just regular nuts and bolts. And right then and there, we got our hardware off. Our ball joint is pretty much loose at this state. I'm going to go ahead and get our camera set up in a different angle so you can see the process of me removing it. To remove our ball joint now that everything is nice and loose, I like to use this little hook tool that you put on the control arm. And what you can do with this is feed a pry bar through it. And this will basically help pull down on the control arm just like so. And once you get the control arm, pull down what you want to do is come in here and remove the ball joint assembly now you guys can see this is what it looks like i'm gonna go ahead and relieve the tension on my arm uh, i like this design it's uh very efficient really easy instead of pressing ball joints in and out so uh, i give toyota a big thumbs up on this uh, i don't know if this design has any limitations but it works great as far as replacing them now that we got the ball joint out, we're going to take our new assembly. Uh, you guys can see this is what it comes with. I like going with the Moog aftermarket one simply because they have a grease fitting that you're going to install right there. So you can grease them up over time, which I find uh, the original ones don't have. And a lot of the aftermarket ones sometimes are sealed. So I like using these. And the way that I'm going to install this, uh, and this can be a little tricky. So you want to make sure that this moves for you. You guys can see I kind of have it angled inward because it's gonna have to line up on the knuckle. I'm gonna go uh, for getting all three lined up in one row here. So I'm gonna pull down on my control arm and see what the best way is to uh, sneak this in here if I'm able to. And I apologize if I'm blocking the camera here, uh, but we need to sneak it in and be able to adjust it to be able to line up with our control arm here now sometimes it doesn't always work out and you may have to uh, take a pry bar here and lift up a little bit on there just like that sometimes they could be very stiff when they're new uh, get our hook back on here so we can pull the pressure down and let's see if we can get it to line up right now just like so and something like that now we're also going to push our knuckle in and this is how I like to do it because you get the upper portion of the ball joint in place and you're also lining it up on the bottom. It's less of a fight uh, when you're doing the rest of the process. So just keep that in mind. And one thing that I like to do just so it doesn't move is I'll take my new bolt for the ball joint the top portion and I like threading it in right now. Uh, just a couple threads. This way uh, it'll keep the ball joint from moving uh, in any which way or possibly coming out of there. Uh, so we're just gonna get as far as we can get with it. And just like that, it's good and tight. Now for the hardware, you're gonna have to reuse the old hardware on this. And Moog was kind enough to supply us with this uh, Loctite. So what you're gonna wanna do is put Loctite on your nuts and bolts. So right here, I'm gonna go ahead and install it on the nut, or on the bolt, I'm sorry. Um, go ahead and put that on there. Now I'm gonna lower it a little bit, make it easier on myself, cause um, doing it up there for you guys to see on the camera, it's kind of a stretch angle. So what I always like to do is uh, come in here and see if I can get this bolt started. Now, I just do a couple threads on it. You're not gonna go crazy trying to impact it right away. Start it off just with a couple of threads. Um, it may not be angled in there correctly, so be very mindful. And then for the nut, uh, same thing guys, just take the Loctite and put it all up in the thread area. Um, I just like to do a nice coating of it, just like so, just like that. And go ahead and start it up on your first stud. And same thing with this other nut here. Just go ahead and put some Loctite in it. For those of you that are not familiar with Loctite, it helps keep uh, things from rattling loose and keeps bolts nice and tight. Uh, usually if it comes in a package with something, you may want to use it because uh, it's required. And Loctite ain't cheap. For those of you that buy it, you know it's expensive stuff. So now that we got everything hand threaded, I'm going to start off with these two bolts, or the nuts I should say. And just 
go ahead and tighten one up and then the other one. And once I do that, then I can reassess my bolt, make sure it's in the correct place and go ahead and tighten that up as well. Now I just tighten these up like that. My gun is more than enough as far as the torque goes because the torque is actually a little bit less than what this gun can do. And I have a fresh battery on this so uh, those things are nice and good and tight. Uh, once you've tightened these up and torqued them, whatever your preferred method is, uh, next thing is we're going to go ahead and tighten up this uh, ball joint bolt here or nut I should say. Now let me go ahead and get some tools and I'll be right back with you guys. So the bolt that we removed was originally a 19 millimeter. The new move ball joint has a 21 millimeter and we've already hand threaded it in place. What I like to do is just put my ratchet on here and uh, we're gonna go ahead and drive it all the way down. And I apologize, I'm pretty sure with my light reflecting off my wrench, this video may uh, look kind of weird here, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just tighten this till it gets snugged up here until I feel that the ratchet portion of it can't do it any longer. And then just to kind of help you guys reference it, see how it's castellated? There is going to be a hole that's for the through. What you're going to want to do is tighten it up till it gets snug. There's no way to torque this bad boy. So the key rule is tighten it up till it's snug and then line it up with the castellated portion so you can feed your cotter pin through. And I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera simply because I got to lower the car and get in where the camera is to be able to do this successfully. So we're just going to tighten it up as much as we can using this wrench and basically just our strength. If uh, you feel you can't get a good bite on it, you can use a cheater pipe with your wrench but don't over tighten them. Uh, again, there's no way you're gonna get a torque wrench in there. Uh, you can do a crow's foot with a torque wrench if you have that set up. However, I still find that's gonna be excessively difficult. So uh, I just do hand tight. Uh, that's typically what most uh, you know of these setups take. But either way, I'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera and I'll be right back with you guys. All right, so we have our bolt tightened up. And one thing that I wanna mention to you guys that I completely neglected earlier, I uh, just wasn't thinking about it, but sometimes when you're installing your new ball joint before you put it in there, and I'm gonna reference the old ball joint here, you notice this little hole, that's where the cotter pin goes through. If you were to line this up right there, you notice how the hole is basically straight shot uh, forward and back. You wanna make sure that when you're installing it, let's say uh, we are right here just for hypothetical reasons. Uh, in order to get your cotter pin in, that hole has to be facing that way. Now make sure your ball joint before you install it, it's in that position because if this hole is 180 off, you can't install a cotter pin going this way because you know, you're going to be hitting the knuckle assembly there. Um, on mine, it was already lined up. Uh, I looked at it before I installed it. I just, like I said, neglected to uh, mention that information. So if your hole isn't lined up, what you're going to want to do is possibly grab it here somehow with some pliers uh, and don't mar it up and just switch up the joint and move it. Usually you don't want to dead center it. I would say you want this hole to be somewhere around here because sometimes when you tighten it, the shaft will move and bring it up to right about there. Uh, just one thing to keep in mind, ours was already pre-clocked, I guess, from the manufacturer. Sometimes they do do that. We'll all set it in a position that they know uh, is gonna be optimum and it'll spin into place correctly. But be mindful, always double check, don't rely on them doing that for you. I found on more than one occasion that sometimes it doesn't line up. Um, now that we have everything lined up and our hole is, you know, basically shooting out straight, we're gonna take the cotter pin and what I'm going to do, I always like putting my cotter pins in head first like this. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and slide this bad boy in like that. And we're just gonna go ahead and bend the cotter pin tabs uh, out. Uh, I like to do kind of like a ampersand kind of a pull out on the cotter pin. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is go ahead and pull this one out. And these cotter pins that come with the Moog ball joints, they're pretty uh, heavy duty. Uh, they don't bend that easy, guys. These are made of pure steel is what I'm guessing because I find that it is difficult sometimes to get them to even bend. They are very tough and sturdy. Uh, this is why I like using the new hardware supplied, uh, especially with this one. Now, some ball joints will come with some cheap hardware and some cheap cotter pins. 
Uh, I always know to, you know, basically spot the difference because sometimes this cotter pin can save the day. Now to give you guys a little bit of a close up, uh, you guys can see that my cotter pin is all bent up there. I still have to push this in a little bit, but I'm gonna do that off camera. Uh, but basically once you bend your cotter pin tabs out of the way, you are pretty much all set and done. Uh, one key takeaway guys, and just something that popped in my head, do not put Loctite on this bolt right there because if you were to do that, you will probably never get that off and uh, you'll probably have to open up the whole knuckle assembly or move the axle to get it off in the future so you definitely don't want to do that to yourself now with the cotter pin bent up what we are going to be doing is installing the zerk fitting for our grease fitting and there is a pre-drilled hole here on the bottom of the ball joint now not all ball joints come with this so depending on which one you ordered you may or may not have it but if you are doing this job i always recommend getting the one that has the zerk fitting guys um, just ask your parts store to open up a box or look at the pictures to see if it comes with one uh, you can't really rely on the pictures too much because sometimes they don't exist uh, when you get the part they'll use like an old picture or something that's outdated so just make sure you physically know they come with uh, the zerk fitting now i just hand threaded mine in there and i'm just using a pair of pliers typically the threading for these fittings are kind of done crappily and quickly at the manufacturing facility uh, so they don't really just thread in nice and easy like they should so once we have it uh put into place what I like to do is go ahead and grab my grease gun and we're gonna go ahead and shoot some grease into it. And we're just gonna be paying attention to the boot right here. When it gets nice and plump and pushes out evenly, which is right there, I leave it be. Now, if I am able to turn my Zerg fitting 180 degrees so I can face the nipple towards the back, I would try doing that um, on this one right now guys I felt it kind of binding up so that's why I stopped at the front point typically the reason why you don't want to face these forward is because salt and debris have a little bit easier access to them that way as you uh, go forward driving along the road uh, you'll be able to you know get some dirt and stuff in there and that could potentially cause an issue later on so if you're able to you know get them to spin out of the way uh, that would be the best policy as a matter of fact I'm gonna try doing that to this one because it, it's preferable uh, to say the least so that would be loosening so tightening I need to go this way and you just want to be careful um, if you feel any sort of resistance and you feel it's gonna fight you obviously uh, don't go any further but there we go so we're able to position it towards the back and like I said uh, the reason why I position them towards the back is that little spring and ball in there if you leave it facing forward all the salt and dirt throughout the years all the road debris will hit it in the front and could potentially clog it at least this way uh, the chances of you driving in reverse for a long period of time enough to get dirt on there or corroded is a little bit limited um, like i said it's just one of those mindful things that could potentially help you out in the long run or make it easier so once we have your cotter pin on there and i'll get you guys zoomed in we have our grease inside our ball joint. Uh, we are pretty much all said and done with this job. Uh, just gotta put the tires on it and go ahead and take it for a spin. So we are all said and done. Our ball joint is in place. Everything is good to go. Uh, what you wanna do is just take it off for a test drive and the job's done. As you guys saw, it's a real quick, simple, easy job. Uh, in my shop with all the tools and equipment, it takes me about 15 to 20 minutes to get this done. Filming it obviously adds a little bit of time, but overall you could do this in an hour or two at your garage with basic tools and it may give you a little bit of a fight when it comes to removing that ball joint bolt and separating the ball joint but from that point on it's pretty much easy peasy so with that said hopefully this video helps you guys out uh, please comment like and subscribe because it definitely helps the channel grow hope you guys have a wonderful day and i will catch you guys on the next video